There are a lot of EV charging companies operating in the US right now, but they all work differently. Different apps, different levels of reliability, and very different customer experiences. And the reality is Tesla controls more than half of the US fast charging market. That leaves automakers and EV drivers looking for a dependable alternative. That's where Ionic comes in. It's a startup that's only been around for about 22 months, but it already has something that no other charging provider has support from eight major automakers. BMW, General Motors, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes-Benz, Stellantis, and Toyota. They launched this company specifically to build a nationwide network that can rival Tesla superchargers, not just in performance and speed, but in overall experience of charging an EV. I could walk you through the basics myself, but I want to bring in a reporter who's covered this project up close to explain what makes IANA different and how fast they are actually scaling. To start, what exactly is IANA? And why did these eight automakers decide to create a new charging company instead of relying on what's already out there? It's a good question. It started in 2023 as a joint venture between what is now eight automakers. And essentially what they told us is they came together to try to figure out how to solve this charging gap. There's this recognition that there just aren't enough public fast chargers out there in the market. There's still problems where people will show up and it's not working or they don't have amenities for people to take advantage of when they're charging for half an hour. Really getting together to recognize we want to build a, a more robust charging network that has a really good customer experience and that we can then kind of share collectively with our own customers, not just today's EV drivers, but you know future drivers too. So your story mentions that IANA is aiming for 30,000 charging bays by 2030. What does that scale look like in practice and how much progress have they already made? They see this being a nationwide network. So what they want to do is really have this across the country, along highway corridors, in cities, major metros, secondary markets. For scale, you know, Tesla's supercharger network right now has about 34,000 kind of charging ports that are out there. and so. This would be comparable to where they are right now as of today. But, you know, they really envision this as being, you know, across the country, something where people can get to while they're traveling, but also something that people can take advantage of when, you know, they, they live locally and just need to find a place to charge. You know, what, what they've said is that they, they want to have about a thousand uh, charging, charging bays operational by the end of the year. They have about uh, 49 locations across the country that are already open. They, they'll kind of point to a number of about 120 locations and 1,200 charging bays that are either under construction all the way up to completed. One of the big themes in your reporting was the charging experience. What does IANA want these stations to feel like for drivers and how is that different from most public chargers today? They've really talked about this as having a, a high quality experience. And so what you'll find is, you know, you'll pull in and you'll have, you know, in as many cases as possible, a canopy over the, the charging stations. They'll either be near or, or include amenities like coffee shops or restaurants or convenience stores, restrooms, outdoor parks or seating. At the very minimum, you know, things like windshield washer fluid and trash cans, the kinds of things that you find today at gas stations. Really trying to make the experience something where, you know, they're well lit, their chargers work, they're quick, and that you have something that you can do, you know, to kind of pass the time when, when the vehicle is charging. IANA is building several types of stations, relay, rechargery, and beacon sites. Can you walk us through what those are and how they're supposed to work together? Yeah, I, I kind of alluded to this before, you know, the, the idea of how some might have amenities and some might be near amenities. That's kind of how they've set up their, their system. So the smallest they're going to call rechargery relays. They have maybe eight to 14 stalls. They don't have their own anchor tenant, but they're going to be near existing amenities. They'll be located near, you know, retail and restaurants and things like that. The rechargery is sort of the, the mid-tier, if you will, roughly 10 to 16 charging stalls and amenities that either IANA will provide or that they'll, they'll be provided by partnering retailers, like Sheets, for instance. You know, they might co-locate at a gas station or, or at a site that has an existing amenity provided by a partner already. And the flagship, the largest, is going to be called the Rechargery Beacon. That's, you know, 24 or more stalls, the richest amenity offerings, the kind of the highest quality 
charging experience. And so the first beacon is actually under construction in Southern California, and um, the company has talked about that opening late spring or early summer next year. You also wrote that IANA already has sites secured in major metro areas like LA, Chicago, New York, and Miami. What's the plan for how they choose locations and expand across the country? Yeah, I think they, they've talked about wanting to be in 50 markets. And so they're starting with, you know, 15 of the of the kind of the, the major metros, you know, the, like those cities that you mentioned. And then they, they plan to expand over the next few, several years into more secondary markets and, you know, along highway corridors, you know, the, the heavily traveled vacation routes. And, you know, they talked about kind of having a meaningful presence and, and it can vary by market, but it might be, you know, multiple sites per market. They want to be as close to just those corridors that people are going to be on when they're driving as possible. And so they're, they're trying to make sure that the, that the presence that they're in really does provide as much of a nationwide coverage as possible. And one last thing, with EV range increasing and charging times getting faster, why invest so heavily in these larger, more comfortable stations? What did Ayana say about that? Yeah, I think that question came up. You know, what happens when, you know, if charging time, if batteries get, get stronger and charging times decrease? I think one of the things that they're pointing to is that, you know, there's still this, there's still this need to have, you know, A, chargers that work quickly, right? So that you do have to spend as little time there as possible, but that, you know, you're going to, you want to go to a place where you know the experience. You know, they talked about, you know, you don't really care where the coffee comes from or how it's made. You just know Ayana and it's it's associated with a brand, right? That it's a an experience that's going to be high quality. Kind of like, you know, the gas station experience. They talked about, you know, for for decades, you know, you know when you go to a gas station, you're going to have a trash can and a convenience store and a bathroom and a place where you can get snacks and you know, while well, your vehicle's filling up, and that's just kind of an expectation. And I think what they are trying to build is that kind of expectation and association with, you know, high quality charging, high quality customer experience, and that would, you know, help kind of create that IANA brand. So that's a closer look at what IANA is building and why so many major automakers are backing it. Tesla may still dominate the charging landscape today. But companies like IANA are trying to redefine not just how EV charging works, but how it feels and what the next decade of EV ownership could look like. For more on this story and everything happening across the EV industry, head to autonews.com.